Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. This should tell you what's been happening in Matrix, the open protocol for secure and decentralized communications. This week we have no less than five demos from Element Teams. Robin is going to show us her work on video rooms. Eric will follow with anonymization of screenshots in the Rage Shakes for Element Web and Desktop. Yana will demonstrate the new fancy red recipe in Element Web, who hasn't already been annoyed by the many overlapping bubbles at the bottom of the screen. Well, this is going to be over soon. Then Jermaine gets hacked by some intelligence agency. Fortunately, Matthew gets to the rescue and gives a demo of Third Room, the Matrix Metaverse client. Finally, German is able to demonstrate customizable user interface in Element Mobile. Let's get started with Robin and Video Rooms. Right, so hi, I'm Robin. I've been working for the past couple months alongside Gael and Nad to bring Video Rooms to Element Web. And I'm going to share my screen here. So the idea behind video rooms is they are a persistent um, video uh, chat that people can hop in and out of um, to allow for more spontaneous and informal conversations than you might see with, for example, um, normal video conferences. Um, so I've got an example space here set up with a couple of different video rooms, which you can see here highlighted in the room list with this indicator. We also see that three people are currently connected to this video room. So if I want to connect as well, I can do here. We get to this lobby view where you're shown um, a view of yourself where you can adjust your camera settings, etc. You also get a live view of who is currently connected to the room. So then we can go ahead and connect as well. And once we're in here, this is the same as any other Jitsi call because um, the current implementation is based on Jitsi. So behind the scenes, this room is basically just um, a normal matri matrix room with a persistent Jitsi widget that um, gets loaded when you connect. Another cool thing about video rooms is that you get uh, text chat right alongside the um, video chat. So you can use this for whatever you want, for pinging people or for pasting links as you talk about things or whatever you want. Um, if you switch between rooms, you'll get a picture-in-picture uh, -picture view that follows you around. So you're always aware of which video room you're connected to. And finally, you can also hop in and out of different video rooms easily um, just by selecting them and pressing connect. Um, so I believe that should be it for my demo. Do we have time for questions? This is awesome. We have several people raising their hands. <laughs> I think that might be people clapping and Jetsy getting terribly confused. Yep. Any, any questions from anybody? I have one uh, request, which is, can we make the picture in picture not be sticky to a corner? Because sometimes you don't want it in the corner. It's a minor thing. <laughs> it me bad. Right. Well, you can always move the picture in picture around. Um, does, it, does it stick to the, uh, have you made it so it goes like free form or does it still click into the edge? Oh, it does still click into the edge. Um, making it free form is something that we could look into. Yes. Thank you. Sorry for the really annoying question. No problem. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, well really impressed. Thank you. This is pretty cool. And the good news is that you can start using it today if you want. You can go to develop.element.io or download Element Nightly if you are a desktop user. And you can go in the labs flag on, of settings and go to the video rooms section and flip the switch and you can try video rooms. Let's move on with Eric and anonymization of rate shakes. I am here. Okay, so today I'm demoing a way to make your screenshots anonymous so that you don't have to deal with blurring everything out after the fact or uh, blurring out the whole screen because then you lose all the context around what the app actually looks like and what's going on. So what this does is color blocks all the text out, makes it look like a CIA redacted document for the whole page essentially. And this makes it easy to put stuff on your issues, whether the bug happens in a, whether it's like company internal room or you're chatting with your mom, you probably don't want your messages always exposed if there's something weird going on. So this is not only useful for developers, but we could also add this into 
the feedback section so you can attach a screenshot as well. So something like maybe looks like this and maybe an option whether you actually want to add a screenshot to your report and then send it off. But basically it adds a thousand more words to your issue bug report so that you can understand what's going on at, at, when we're trying to like actually address this as a developer later. How do you um, this, how, how do you trigger it? Like, how do you make this? This happen? is all JavaScript snippets that are just running. This could essentially run on any web page right now, but it would be nice to maybe integrate this more into Element itself because we don't really need to anonymize stuff like the headings here. Like they're all generalized to the UI for everyone. Home favorites, home, whether you're in the settings, stuff like that is the same for everyone. And would make the app a bit more clear if it wasn't anonymized as well. We only need to apply this to gen user generated content. And we could also extend this so that there's event ID labels in the corner so you can easily correlate the screenshot to the logs you're reading. It's like, oh, this one's acting weird. I wonder what's happening. Um, if you're interested in this sort of feature, there's still a long ways to go. Give this issue a part. And if you want to check out the JavaScript running the demo, it's here, code pen, demo of the same sort of thing. And if you're interested in taking this over, please do, because there's more work to actually get this in Element itself. So comment, give some feedback on how this should all work. This is, this, will we be able to see this in Android and iOS? I doubt it, because this is just working off HTML text nodes. If Android and iOS are using okay. HTML JavaScript stuff, then sure, but I don't think that's the case. But yeah, it's similar to the Android and iOS features where you, you can already attach a screenshot to your bug reports. I could see it be used in that situation. The less we know about you, the better. Let's follow with Jana and Red Receipts. It's uh, a nightly, but I don't know if everyone has seen that yet. Uh, we've changed the way the red receipts in uh, the chat are rendered. So you've got some more context. And even if they're long, they don't overlap anything else anymore. And you can click and then actually see everyone who has read your message, which is a feature that I've actually got some feedback from some users who said it's so much better than what Discord and others are doing that they've uh, submitted feature requests to them to implement the same functionality. It's time to see Jermaine struggle and Matthew come to the rescue. Okay, now I'm losing connectivity. Um, this is amazing. Every time he shows the screen, <laughs> his Wi-Fi drops out. I don't know what's going on. Um, I suspect we... the CIA has something to do with it, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Your special <laughs> network card drivers. <laughs> Um, I mean, are you going to be able to demo off a different laptop? I'm going to try and do that now. Okay, cool. Brilliant. Um, I guess, so that means me. Okay, so I was going to just briefly talk about Third Room, mainly because I demoed it at the Internet Archive yesterday for this uh, webinar about decentralized media and watch out Facebook, here we come. And obviously Facebook has got all excited about the metaverse stuff. And we've been working on virtual worlds on top of Matrix one way or another since about 2017. And um, over the last year, things have accelerated a lot more with um, Robert and Nate joining the team. And um, in the last month, it's gone through the roof. And um, uh, honestly, I'm not the right person to talk about the specifics of what has been um, implemented here. But um, uh, first of all, we've got a new game engine, full stop, which I think is possibly going to be called Manifold. Um, but I'm not sure a name has been selected yet. At the moment, it's basically the third room engine. And we believe, I think, this is the most performant web-based 3D engine there is in that everything is happening on threads using the very uh, very latest um, uh, primitives that you get in browsers uh, for shared array buffers and the other mechanisms for basically sharing memory between different threads in a super efficient manner. And um, nothing happens by default on the uh, main thread other than I think audio where because you can't do web audio on web workers yet and so like the physics and the rendering and the networking is all happening now on, on background threads and there are some really funky log free data structures called a triple buffer which allows everything to synchronize together 
Um, the way in which the engine works is also to have an entity component system, which basically tracks the existence of everything in a very funky way that Nate has um, come up with, where um, everything is stored in arrays um, for cache and um, performance purposes. But long story short, it means that we can do all sorts of very performant 3D stuff. Now on the matrix side, uh, what we've done is to take the hydrogen SDK and um, use it for all of the matrix and sort of signaling and um, uh, room navigation and chat views of things. Um, this is pretty experimental because hydrogen SDK is what? Two months mm -hmm. old, yeah, three months old, it's, it's pretty new. And um, it's also using MSC 3401, so element call style voice um, conferencing for audio when we get there, and also for data channels in order to actually link the world up together. So um, basically, you end up establishing um, a data channel voice call between all the participants in this room. And um, over that very low latency channel, you go and throw um, updates of what's happening in the world um, together in terms of the geometry and the physics and in future assets. And in future future, we would also be snapshotting that somehow into matrix. So the actual room will end up storing the state of the world, but the real time interactions happens kind of peer to peer. Um, so that's kind of what the idea is. Let me actually show my screen and show you what this looks like in practice. So Hi, it's Matthew here, um, recording a demo for Third Room, which I completely messed up during the um, um, demo session the other day. So what we hear and see here is um, Third Room, which is a new matrix client um, built on top of the hydrogen SDK. And um, you can see that sort of superficially, this looks a little bit like hydrogen. We've got a whole bunch of rooms, including real matrix rooms sitting here, because I'm using one of my test accounts on matrix.org. And what Robert and Nate and AJ have been up to um, is going and building a entirely new um, 3D game engine for web, um, which is uh, tentatively called Manifold, um, suitable matrix name, also that for um, an engine. And we can see a preview of the world state of one of these worlds here. Now, if I go and jump into, say, this room, and hit enter, then you get deposited into this. Now, hopefully this is recording at a full 60 frames a second, and you can see we've already got quite a nice little engine flying around here. We can look around, we've got some reflection maps going on. I can go faster, I can go and fly around a bit and look around. You can see my avatar is this beautiful um, purple cube. Now, one of the um, uh, fun things about this is that this is literally a virtual world whose um, state will be stored in matrix and all of the communication is being um, negotiated over matrix using MSC 3401 um, style full mesh um, voice video and indeed data channels for the world data. I'm actually slightly cheating and using the test net on this one because we're still ironing out some bugs on the hydrogen SDK for hydrogen some full mesh voice and video support. Um, in terms of the engine itself, um, some things to mention are that it's using the very latest primitives for multi-threading. And you can see um, in the top right here, my CPUs are all churning away um, all 10 cores on my M1 Mac um, because it is properly, properly multi-threading this um, nicely um, with separate threads for rendering and for doing the game engine, for doing the physics, um, and also uh, the main UI thread ends up basically being idle. Um, if I hit the enter key at this point, you can see that some of my test accounts have joined this room and hello world, uh, welcome to using hydrogen SDK for in-game overlay chat in third room. Woo. And if I go and shrink this guy down, you'll see I actually have another client carefully prepared with my other test user. And if I join the same world here, then um, and I press enter, uh, hello, you can see the chat work in theory, there we go, slight latency, uh, we are going through uh, matrix.org um, here for better or worse, and I guess it's dropped one of the messages. Anyway, the fun thing here isn't necessarily the in-game chat, I've gone and lost my cube, it's the fact that um, we can synchronize world state over data channels, so if I go and look 
the right way down the street, you can see um, this user, and the, ignore the fact the colors of the cubes are wrong, we just need to synchronize the materials there. And you can see me running around here on the left, as seen from the right-hand side. Now, you can also hear these interesting banging noises. And this is because um, Nate has just added in spatial audio with collision sounds. And this is probably um, uh, the best way to demonstrate this is if I go and fire off some cubes. So we can see the physics engine here. If I go and press the F button, um, then I can go and start emitting sequences of cubes. And you can hear these weird banging noises as they collide with each other. A bit like that. How exciting. Um, and I can go and jump onto these guys, and I land on them and run around and then you get the appropriate banging noises. We're hearing it in double because both sides of them are going and generating the spatial audio. Um, but if I go and say close this instance, um, then it might be a bit more obvious. So, for instance, let me fire up a bunch of cubes over here and then turn around. And you might hear as I turned around that at the moment they're in front of me, but now they're to my left. And if I fire some there and turn that way, then they're on my right, assuming that I'm capturing the audio in stereo, which I think I am. Um, other fun stuff we can do is to create stacks of cubes which go up in the air and then balance on your nose until they eventually fall over like that. And, I mean, obviously this is um, just a quick proof of concept without any avatars. Um, and it's really fun to see the physics engine and game um, state flying around. But the idea is to snapshot this into Matrix. And hey, presto, we have Metaverse on Matrix. Watch out, Facebook, because we are coming for you. Um, so there you go. That's what's happening on Third Room at the moment. I'm going to try and share my screen. Yay! 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 Um, so I'm demoing this on behalf of Jill. Um, so in the Delight team, we're trying to run some experiments at the moment. Uh, we have essentially three cohorts of users using Element uh, for personal messaging to uh, discuss with the community, like if you're joining the Mozilla.org uh, home server, or if you're using that um, as part of work, like um, at Element or at DWI or different people. And all of those different users have different needs um, and we thought it would be interesting to have a way to um, edit the layout of the mobile applications to essentially have different things. Um, so I'm going to play that short video. Essentially, um, you have the home screen of iOS. Um, you can go on the user menu, edit layout, uh, and now you can decide to have either rooms or your favorite, the recent, the favorites, or the unreads, or anything like that. And you can pick and choose the ones that are relevant for you. Um, and that then re-renders the home screen and you have something that is a bit more catered to your needs. Um, so this is uh, what we're currently building. Um, it's not ready yet, but as soon as it will be, we'll give that to different people, gather feedback and see how to move forward um, in Element. Um, so yeah, it says- That looks it's awesome. Still early stages, but yeah, uh, what Jill has put together is uh, looking really cool. And uh, that's it for me. Um, I guess that's it, everybody. Thanks for that. I don't think there are any other demos. Um, thanks for uh, running over. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.